we are live. Today is Sunday, August 28, 2016, and I have with me Jim, and uh, locally in audience I have Kappa and Olga, and welcome Armisys, Astrid, Christopher, Amy, Peter, <coughs> uh, Liney, uh, Sean, Shirley, TC, Thank you very much for joining. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, Jim, can you can introduce your audience? Yes, um, here I have with me David, David Decker and Angela Speed. David Waller, I'm sorry. David Waller and Angela Speed. All right, do we have announcements? Um, nothing right now. And I hear the echo. I will to see. I will mute you for now. If you need to speak, just unmute yourself. I think that's from you, okay? Because everybody else is muted. Okay. Okay. To see, I will mute you. If you need to speak, I will un unmute you. Oh, to see is not mutable. Okay. Can you mute yourself? Press the button mute on your on your phone or whatever you use. Oh, thank you. All right. Um. Announcements. Uh, tomorrow there is Wendy's, um, Wendy's event, which is, <laughs> don't worry, all right, Wednesday's event, which is at um, 1 11 p.m. Central Star Time, whatever it is for, so I guess it would be around noonish of um, Eastern Time. And to find it, go on a uh, Hukula calendar at humancolony.org. So now humancolony.org is functional, more fun, even more functional, and we have unified calendar. And if you run the event, post it there. It's very easy to post there. And for uh, links and events, go there. And on humancolony.org, the in, in Hukula calendar will can can find current events, coming events. It's all there. Now. Um, uh, thank you. Yesterday we got a donation, which was wonderful. Uh, we are doing it voluntarily, uh, voluntarily, voluntarily. How do you say it in English? Um, uh, as a volunteers, and um, we have paid classes, but the, um, there is tons of work to to set up these webinars, and um, uh, we do it as a donation to the humanity, as a, a service. But if we get a little bit of your donations, and we do, thank you very much. It really helps to run things smoother. Um, I think these are all announcements. Yeah, uh, Reiki classes. The next Reiki class is coming at uh, September 18th, and um, it is Reiki 1A class for $50, and a week later will be Reiki 1B. So you can start on the Reiki path. And actually, we'll give you some Reiki start right now because you will need it for you. Everybody needs it. All right, I think that's all announcements. Jim, do you have anything to add? Anybody has anything to add? Uh, anybody here have anything? No, I think we're good. All right. Do you want to give a blessing? Yes. Hold on. I have somebody that's not able to get into the Hangout. All right. Humancolony.org calendar link. Should be there. It is there. Human Colony dot org calendar link. Okay, we'll see if they can get in that way. One moment, please. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we can be together, that we can unite and be one, that we can sh share our thoughts, our energies, and our love with one another and grow in a way that is positive. We know that we are coming together in a way that is going to help others and ourselves just bring the correct information to us, the correct understanding of the information to us, 
and help each and every one be and uh, interpret everything correctly. Also, to be interactive when necessary. Let everyone speak up. Let no one be afraid. If this is a time of sharing, love, freedom, and not a time for any kind of um, judgment of any kind. We love you, we thank you, and we pray that you continue to light our paths. Amen. Amen. Oh, that is a huge echo. Where is it from? Um, the echo is coming from Jim. Everybody else is muted. Jim, can you make your sound? Oh, how? Um, yeah, I guess what's happening, you have... I have a high volume. Uh, are you using the headset? I'm muting. Jim, are you using the headset? In the past, you used headset, and there was no echo. You need to use the headset. I don't want to mute you. Is there any way you can use headset and speak through headset? Uh, you are. Do you have any helpers who have uh, who can set? I guess your microphone is not switched to headset, but all right. Yeah, we want to have you conversational. I'm sorry for that, but we need your live response. If you will be muted and unmuted, it will be a problem. Can, can you unmute yourself? Mm -hmm. Hello, Jim? Can you say something? One, 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 one. All right. Hold on. Go back. Up here? Yeah. Okay. Turn it off so that I can say something. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I already me unmuted you. Oh, you muted yourself. I'm, I'm in mute. I'm mute. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? You're good, but there is a cut. Well, you see, that's I put that back into the regular microphone. I was using the headset. But the mm -hmm. headset you said was giving feedback, and now you're saying that the other mic is also giving feedback. Uh, do you have anybody with computer knowledge nearby? He's doing it right now. Oh, uh, can I speak to him? What's your what? name? David? David, yeah. Yeah, can you hold, press uh, the uh, plug in the microphone and choose it from the uh, gear bar on the top? There is a gear. You have to choose a microphone. Plug in is we, not sufficient. We did that already. Yeah, we did that. Too. Yeah, that's on. All right. Can, can you just make it a little quieter then? Just the sound, the quieter, the the speakers. That, that How's that right there? One, two, three, four, five. It's perfect now. Almost okay. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Allah Allah Amana Allah No echo Allah ya na la na ayu ma Allah ayya Thank you all for joining So basically we are getting the message from above that it's time to start speaking about the emergency preparedness. And the emergency preparedness is a key word for disasters that might be coming. What kind of disasters? Prim primarily, the primary one would be the global economic crisis, global economic collapse, mm -hmm. and the other ones like nature disasters. Uh, interestingly, most of the world, much of the world are living in such a poor conditions that you know they they know how to live without electricity water and other things they just you know can live natural way but uh, you know so you know most civilized countries the, the whole generations grew up with electricity and water so for them it might be harder it might be harder um, I was holding off this webinar for for three years. You know, I was trying to start it three years now, and you know, I tended to like speak about these things, but that was a blockage. You know, uh, every time I wanted to speak about that, something would block me, and I would feel it's not good time. We don't want to scare people too soon, right? And now it's it is time. I'm mean, just getting the message and confirmations that it's time to start speaking about 
uh, possible emergencies. Um, and maybe my uh, my understanding evolved to the way that I, I just realized it's it is something which is needed by the divine plan. Basically, the idea is that uh, the Earth's economy went to a state where it is beyond repair. Basically, it is the system which where everybody owes to everybody. That's the main problem of the economy. There is too much of fake money, electronic money, fake money, how do you call it? Bonds, papers, non-existent money, money in, in, in the banks. And that system is not fixable by uh, normal means. At least that's what we hear from others. Maybe there is a miracle which could fix it, but so far the main idea is that the easiest way to fix it is just to replace it and build it from scratch. That's what we hear. So if that is happening, um, you know, that would take years. It wouldn't. It wouldn't happen at once. Um, we speak to our alien friends, and they confirm. Like yesterday, I asked Takur, when do we should we expect that collapse? Uh, the previous predictions was 11 years from now, 2027, and Takur said it. Sh it it's likely to happen much sooner. And what is sooner? We don't know. I assume just random number five years so we have five years to kind of get used to that idea that we will have that collapse and it will rebuild rebuild their the humanity rebuild the economy so that's my current understanding it might change I just I, I get what I hear it, it's not it's not my divination it's just what I hear from others and I keep asking I keep asking when it's coming is it necessary can we make it easy and um, many countries went through that. Like, I guess most famous was um, Greece, right? Greece recently went through that. In Russia, we, we lived through that. So we have that experience of total economic collapse. Like every day, not every day, but every few days, the ruble would, would be dev devalued. Like maybe in a year or two, we get the ruble devalued uh, about a million times. <laughs> or maybe hundred thousand times, like uh, say the gas, the gas price would go from uh, like it was in nineties. It was I guess one dollar. Now it's whatever, two fifty, and then it goes next day. It goes three dollars, and then got keep growing, and then it's hundred dollars for a gallon. Then it's three hundred for a gallon. Then it's thousand for a gallon. So. Uh, why that happens in countries? It's uh, the, the the economy goes down and um, the government starts printing more money. And the, nowadays they don't even need to print; they do electronic money. They create tons of tons more money. So basically, because of the crisis, they just that that's inflation. It's called inflation. And um, that 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 is the only way they can survive and keep the order. And also it. Uh, devalues all, all uh, debts and all, how do you call it, all uh, savings, all savings, debts and savings. And um, that's a short, short, short story. That that what happens in different countries, we went through that. And uh, when, when nobody is owning anybody, any, 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 anything, anybody, when everybody starts from scratch, everybody has nothing, um, there is a certain refreshment. That's a short story on economy, how it usually happens. Uh, I don't know how it will happen. Uh, the aliens are discussing the possibilities of not having the money. And I don't see it. And uh, Takur again said that most likely, or more likely than not, how, how about that? More likely than not, there will be still, after the refreshment, after the collapse, there will be still new new kind of money or new money printed or something of that sort. So we'll start from scratch again with the money, monetary system. I don't see how the humanity could function without money yet. I'm looking carefully like other examples of people not having money and like exchanging fairly without having money. So the examples are there like within the family for sure and most families you like serve your dinner without charging your <laughs> your family members 
not all this, but most cases. Um, communes, like in Israel, there are communes called kibbutzes. So they function within the commune, they function without money. Corporations, some corporations, they have internal exchanges between departments without actually actual money, or maybe internal money. So basically, internal way of exchanging. Franchises, like within, within the Within the monastery, there, is, there are things which are given to people for free, distributed equally or somehow else. So that, that is possible. But I don't think the whole humanity would be able to function. There is not enough, I would say, most of the people, majority of the people, would take more than they need. And you know, if the resource is limited, would take to, to themselves without living for others. Uh, and that's the nature of life on Earth. Even animals, mm, sometimes they would take, like dogs would take more, uh, aim to get more than others. Very few animals would kind of share resources equally if there is not enough. Okay, um, so that that's a 3D picture. Now, uh, so the miracle is needed. The miracle is needed. And a miracle is coming. Um, nowadays, in our community, we experience miracles like every week, sometimes daily, sometimes every week. Jim, I think, is just constantly in a miracle state. Prepare your questions. I will finish my uh, introduction in a few minutes, so prepare your questions. So a miracle is needed, and a miracle is coming. And the miracle is when the things go down, uh, people become confused. Even people on the top become confused. Uh, we live again in Russia. We know what happens. Just you know, if all things stop, like 1991, 92, all things stop, and police doesn't have the salary, so why would they do the job? Uh, Firemen don't have their salary. Why would they do their job? Um, and so on and so on. Hospitals don't have electricity. What, why would they do their job? Not, we didn't have that in that big extent, but pretty much, pretty much, close to that. Sometimes, often. So when that happens, the whole thing stops and people get lost. And when people get lost, their traditional circle of thinking is not spinning in the same direction. And the chaos in economy causes a chaos in, uh, in minds, just lost. And the collective consciousness becomes dark, basically. There is darkness. There is nothing bright, just psh, noise. And at that point, the miracles are much easier to manifest. Right now you're manifesting miracles in your life, but at that point miracles become a routine because the whole matrix of beliefs is not spinning anymore. Uh, then and the, the, the reality of, ma of that matrix is supported by the people. When they are not supporting the reality, it becomes fluid or like guess. So there you can crystallize the miracles. So I think that, that at that point, like if you if you lived, I think everybody lived through blackouts when electricity is turned off. You can hear the the vibration of the of the air is different, vibration of the ether is different. So at that point the telepathy would kick on. And the people who hold the hold the light would be able to transmute the, the reality. So we are forming a grid. We are forming a grid. The light workers, you are forming a grid, and transmute the reality into the into the higher dimension. So that's that's how I see the a wave of ascension. When the things go down, uh, there is an opportunity to lift the system up. Um, how you how you get to that state? Um, I call it avatar state, where you become part of the grid and connect to God, to Divine Mother, to the Creator. 
to the feminine and masculine aspects of God, Mother, Father, God. So you practice that every day, basically. Reiki, the heart chakra activity, healing of others, transforming the reality. Uh, right now, as you practice Reiki, you mostly work on humans, but as you grow, as you grow your spiritual body, you shall be able to transform the society as well. Not only individual people, but the society as well. Um, channeling is another way of connecting your through higher chakras of yourself to the divine. And that's another way of plugging into the into the divine grid, to the yeah, divine grid around the earth. You become a channel for angelic energies. And then you invite um, your higher self to enter your body and become an avatar, basically, the incarnation of God. For that, to, to have God enter you, your higher self enter you, or God enter you as a higher self, you have to build your spiritual body so there is a space, there is a connection, there is energy there to, 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 to get, get that in. So, so that's the third, third um, upgrade, which is an avatar state upgrade, avatar upgrade. You possibly wouldn't be able to hold it all the time, but you will be connected all the time, and in critical times you would uplift your energy and get, get that manifested. So that avatar state is like breathing. You get get into the state like in channeling state. You get into the, you invite the, the your higher self to enter your body. You hold it as is healthy for you, and then you let it go. I think that's about the main message I get. There are there is a lot of um, steps. Lots of meditation is one of them. There are lots of steps to that, but. Um, you have time. It's not happening tomorrow. No, it's not happening now. People are afraid to think of that, and um, people think that if you block the idea of, of disaster, then it wouldn't happen to you. Uh, and I, I believe that's so, too. But right now, it seems like it's part of the divine plan. And it's not that you have to be afraid of the disaster. You have to convert the disaster into a, just a change, just a harmless, the most harmless change you can imagine. So we need a change, the, the earth needs a change, so you would imagine what's the best scenario, how the world would change, and together we, we, we can manifest it. So that's the idea. Like in Russia, the disasters were they didn't come at one wave, they, they came in smaller waves. There was time to prepare, there was time to accommodate. Interesting thing, on day three you get used to that. On day three you get used to that. Like if you ever went to a hospital for more than three days, like or you, you just be there with your relative, you just get used to that complete essence of the disaster, right? Um, so you get used to that. Uh, there are waves, and in Russia it was like scary waves, but 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 they weren't complete. They were partial. There was not complete destru destruction. It was partial destruction and partial rebuild, uh, re reconstruction or rebuilding, and lots of good things happened as well. Lots of good th things happened as well. When the system crashes, there is an opportunity, tons of opportunities for fresh energy, fresh creation to come through. So that's my understanding. It's, it's me analyzing things and getting the messages and trying to build it together. So that's my current understanding. And I invite Jim to speak, and after that I invite the questions. Jim, yeah, I can hear you so far. I think you're unmuted, but I cannot hear you. While Jim is fixing the microphone, I, I think I will, I will take a question, and then we'll see if Jim can fix his microphone. 
Jimmy's microphone is not working. Any comments, questions so far? Any comments, questions? Оля, у вас есть вопросы? Нет? А я? Ты хочешь questions? Нет? Ага. Uh, Max, did you say there will be... All right, timing, yeah. The timing is... Com I, I don't want to to take any responsibility for the timing. I... Uh, uh, my, my, my sources, until now, it was the number 2027 was confirmed many times, like as a divine number. So Jim, we can hear you now. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, so... Um, until now, uh, the number 2027 was um, pronounced many times, and I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to believe it. But um, it started only through gym channels, and then now it comes from other channels. So that was kind of 11 years from now was the time. Now, the cure yesterday said, it's like one one uh, message, but we like the cure and trust her. There is a lot of... first-hand knowledge what in what Tucker has. She is, like, well-informed. Um, and she said it might, might happen much sooner. That's the only thing we know. So I, I would take five years, but really, it's, it's, it's really hard to predict. It's not fixed. It's, what, it's, it's in works when the humanity is ready. One observation, like, my, one of my observations was, again, it, it, the realization which came last web, after last webinar a week ago, talking about uh, na na Nazism uh, and Stalin, like, you know, Russia versus Germany. What did God do with that? What was the divine plan? Why did they allow it? And I just realized it was very scary, but it wasn't a, a complete disaster. It wasn't a complete uh, destruction. It was a destruction which... neutralized both of the negative countries, both of the negative totalitarian regimes. It was carefully planned, so none of them would be left strong. So the world around them played it in a way that Germany was neutralized and Stalin was neutralized. If one of them was left strong, then the whole history would went very differently. So I would say, with all the disasters that happened, the outcome was actually most pretty positive relative to what could happen if it wouldn't happen, right? If they weren't neutralized, the whole human history would, would, would go differently. So just from that lesson, I would say um, we, are, we seem to be in good hands, and the angels and aliens and the creator are... Mm, playing that drama in a way which is most beneficial long term. So if they tell us that you know the the change is coming, I would say that's maybe the least the least uh, possible damage, least possible damage, the kind of change which will bring least possible damage. That's what, what what's my understanding. More comments, questions. Uh, Jim, are you ready to speak? This is Ish. Thank you, Ish. I have come through because I want to give a different perspective on things. Thank you. You see, many of you see the economy in one way. We look down and see it from an outer view. <clears throat> You see, once your money has devalued, then that means your debt increases. Do you understand that? It means that whenever a country is devalued in some way, say the ruple, as you were speaking, and it goes and becomes devalued, that means the debt of that country goes up. Why? Because the value of their money cannot pay the debt, they may have had a hundred billion rubles, but 
when it is devalued, the value of a hundred billion rubles is now perhaps seventy billion. So therefore, when they go to pay their debt, they must have the foreign exchange for the money, and they their money is worth less, and so they can pay less, and so their debt increases. As their money becomes less valuable, their debt increases. Now, let me give you the scenario of the Earth right now. Your weathers are changing. Your countries all over the world are experiencing different weather patterns. This means crop failures in almost every part of the world, at least one kind of crop or another. This means also, uh, let me give you an example. You are much warmer in the north this year, much rainier in other places, much drier in other places. Your crops have been organized so that they would be in the proper place for that seasonal weather. If your crops would happen to fail, which they are doing, or are they, they are not doing as well as expected, then that means you will go in debt again because you will have to depend on another country to bring in that crop that has failed in your area. Now, looking at the world scenario, there's very little of that crop that survived, perhaps, because of the weather changes, because of different things, fires, earthquakes, volcanoes, and different earthly functions. So therefore, this year, your planet is in a greater need than in other years because you are seeing a greater effect of what you call, well, you know what you call it, global warming. But it is caused by yourself, partially. The thing is about this, it will cause all countries to go more in debt in one area or another. This brings you closer to the global collapse because it will devalue you. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. You may rise in value in one place and be devalued in another. So therefore, when you see things changing, when the food prices go up, when your gas prices increase, when the things are changing, you, you notice the change of value in your money and in the monies of all those around the world. Is there any questions about this so far? I'm good. Very good. So you are experienced. You have not yet come into the full experience of what this year has done to the economies of the world. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. Because the, this growing cycle, this food cycle has not yet completed. Now this has been a landmark year for certain crops because of the change. Perhaps grapes. Grapes have increased greatly and they're much sweeter this year because it's been drier and hotter. Do you understand that? So, but who needs more wine? That is not one of the great things that you will be needing when the economies collapse. So therefore, Yes, there are some crops that are doing very well because of the climate changes, but there's others that are suffering a great deal. And you will note this at the end of your fiscal year. Now, many, many places in the earth are experiencing these climate changes, and their monies will be changing due to these crop failures. So you're going to see a very, very big imbalance of the monies around the, around the world and this will definitely be one of the keys to an economic collapse eventually. I'm not saying when it will be 
but this is causing a great deal of irregularity in the economic climate. Do you understand that? Therefore, as your money becomes worth less, your debt becomes higher. As their monies become less, their debt becomes higher, and it's all happening at once because they have debts to different places for different things. And the crops that they are purchasing and bringing in from other places are not equal. And smaller countries are now doing better than some of the larger countries because of the different kinds of crops that are being traded. And so these smaller countries need to be paid because they cannot survive without the money from the larger countries. And therefore, if the larger countries' money is devalued, then they have less money to give to these countries that need it. Does this make sense to you? I wanted, I to, wanted to ask more about divine... Divine what? Divine intervention. Divine intervention comes with prayer and with beseeching God and asking God to help. A lot of people are not doing this at this time because they don't see the need to. They don't see the emergency. Right now, things are rather normal to them, but it's going to be suddenly different at some time. Perhaps not quite yet, but things are very unbalanced at this time. This is why you're doing this kind of speech at this moment, because the imbalance is becoming more noticeable, at least to us. Um, uh, can you talk about the plans of the aliens uh, after the collapse? What would they do? Well, only spiritual beings are allowed to intervene. Aliens are not permitted to help you regain your finances. They are not allowed to help you because this is a goes against the prime directive. If you cannot succeed on your own and you cannot succeed with the help of divine intervention, then you shall perish because they feel that is the will of God. If you understand, I put it in your layman's terms. Absolutely, absolutely. So therefore, you must save yourselves, and I believe that you will. Uh -huh. But the thing is, you must also be aware, and that is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. I am telling you that the imbalance has started. The imbalance is here. You notice this year's climate is especially very much off. Did you notice that? Maybe you're not... Oh, in I just moved, so I didn't notice, but others might have... Has anyone else noticed the climate change being very off? Yes. Excellent. Anyone else? Definitely. Absolutely. It is a different weather pattern than you've ever seen. The jet stream is also not correct on your planet for the growing of vegetables or the correct vegetables at the correct places. You see see the south of your, of your United States and the south of your planet is geared for certain products and the north is geared for certain products. It is doing a change. Did you see that the north uh, weather is more like the south and the south weather is more like the north? The east weather is more like the west and the west weather is more like the east. This is a, a total imbalance and will affect the crops. And if it lasts for more than a couple years, will be very detrimental to the entire world as far as your food supply. Now, I know that there are those that are understanding and taking this indoors, hydroponically, or indoors in very the greenhouse effects. But even with that, they're not fast enough and not uh, keen enough to know which things are going to fail at this moment and which things are going to survive. The other thing is, when this kind of weather change happens, the insect population must 
force themselves to feed on other things. Do you understand that? So there will be a very quick evolution in your insect population to be able to survive on different kinds of foods. Your animal population. These things happen throughout your evolution on Earth. And so some things will die off and other things will mutate. And so this is another part of what is going to be happening. There will be mutations in vegetation. There will be mutations in insect life. And um, some tree species will die or plant species will die because they cannot handle the change that is happening so quickly. You see, um, humans will be able to handle this because they can be indoors or outdoors or they can change their own um, atmosphere if you will however insects will be and p animals and plants cannot so much do this so quickly uh, Ish uh, could I interrupt you my audience is uh, being scared uh, although no, you are very, very good them. Thing. the very fact that you're speaking about this is sort of scary don't you think right, right. Do you mind? Uh, would you? Who would you recommend to speak to on the other side? Maybe angelics or divine essences, which would uh, uplift the the moods. Is there any like angel which would like to speak? I can I can uplift the mood for you. However, you are right. the one that brought this scenario to the people. They need right. to know the truth, and no one's going to be uplifting in this particular uh, subject matter. You must be scared to protect yourself. You must be frightened to know what is coming so that you must take the proper actions. Don't you see that? There's no happy, happy about this subject. Uh, let me explain. Uh, I'm running the show which could be popular or could be unpopular. And, uh, I'm and this will make it more popular. It wouldn't reach the audience. Why don't you ask your viewers what they want to hear? Okay. Uh, I invite questions. I personally think it's. I personally think things are going fine. Um, uh, whether the information is not the greatest, um, I mean, we always have information that is not so great. I think it's what we do with the information that's important. Thank you. From my point of view, I guess we have to face with the truth in, in many sense. So I guess we should move forward and just re see this happening and prepare ourselves and, as Ish said, just uh, doing the right steps. So I agree with So even it's frightening, we have to face with this issue. It is coming. So if we don't look at it, then we will be unprepared from my point of view. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Max, it's Astrid. Um, I wanted to just comment quickly too. I think it is important that we um, look at this with the perspective of uh, reality and that we get grounded in what that reality is and then from there we can develop a game plan for each and every one of us. And I think the other aspect is um, to remember that we are all here because we signed up to be here for this. We knew somewhere this was going to happen and that we were going to um, help make drive changes. So uh, that is uh, my two cents. Yeah, let me explain my, my, my um, point. Um, it's, you know, going to aliens to explain as the economy is wonderful, but there is so much already known about the economy. It's not such an interesting topic. I wanted to speak specifically about what a person should do, a person, not the, not the whole country, what the person should do after that happens. So, so that's like from the personal perspective, how do you prepare your spiritual body, what your spiritual practices are. The topic of, the, of this show is emergency preparedness and Reiki from the personal perspective. So. Global economy is wonderful. We got the message. It's gonna change. But how do you prepare yourself? What spiritual practice? What practical 3D practice you should do to live through the time and help everybody? So that's 
yes. from the personal perspective. So I think an angelics always have been most helpful in that. And Ish, if you want well, to contribute, I welcome that as well. Well, I just wanted to bring that perspective to you so that people would take the information more seriously how to prepare. You Thank see, you. without this person, without this information, some may just say, oh, that was interesting, and let it go. However, if I show and let you know that there is a need for them to understand the information and the preparation that you are going to be giving, then they will take it much closer to heart. Absolutely. Thank you. So therefore, you. so therefore, I will leave if you have had enough. Uh, there is a question from uh, Sean. Or yes. So um, I have been visualizing myself in this scenario where basically the economy collapses and um, I the, the cities like need to be abandoned because of you know Roman gangs and things like that, and I was I was wondering if I'm in a group of people and if I get a message from like my higher self to go one way, and this group of people is saying no no go go like we're going this way, uh, what should I do then? Because my like logical self is saying oh I'm better off in a group. But then, like, my spiritual aspect is like, no, go, like, don't listen to them. Follow, you know, what the divine guidance is saying. What do you recommend to do in that situation? I understand what you are saying. A group situation always seems safer. However, if your spirit is telling you to go, you should go. However, you do have free will. And you may be tending to want to be with the group instead of being alone. And therefore you have to make a decision in free will. And that decision is yours and yours alone. My heart would say, if the spirit speaks, go with the spirit. Thank you. But I will leave you alone now because I, I have frightened you enough, as he had said. But I want you to take to heart what it is that he is trying to do. I understand he wasn't expecting this from me, but it was necessary that I come to do this so that you would take this closer to heart and, and understand where things are at this time so that you are not waiting for years and years before you prepare. You do Ishla? need to prepare. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Let that is why you are doing this now. And I will leave you alone and let someone else speak. Let me just explain once more. Uh, I just see that I'm losing audience here physically and, and, and there. People just get scared and go away and don't listen to you. So, so Well, they're going to have to listen eventually. Eventually. But it can be done in a way which is helpful even for people who are scared. I think it was helpful. Thank you. Because I believe that there are a certain part of the audience you won't be able to get to now anyway. Right. And there's a certain part of these that of your listeners that will be listening no matter what. And there's a certain part of your audience that is ready for this. And that is who I am speaking to. And that is who needs to hear this. You must understand it is not about how many people are in the audience. It is about how many people are listening. Right. It Thank is you. about how many people are understanding the information. Those people would have not listened to you anyway, and that's why they're not here. That is the message I must bring to you. Do not be concerned about people going away or coming or being frightened because that is their own belief system working with them. These people here, they understand from your perspective and from mine what is happening and will grow. If those people leave, they were not meant to be here. Much love to you and I will say goodbye. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you, Ish. Thank you, Ish. Much love, Ish. Much love to you all.
Oh. Hi. Hi. Hey, Jim. Hello. How are you? I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> I, I hope to to get an angel to come through, but that's okay. Um, Alrighty then. I take questions from the audience right now while while this Jim is recovering. Yes, I need water. I'll be back. Oh, oh, thank you. He's gonna get it for me. Hello, Max. Do you recommend buying storable? Say again. Recommend what? Recommend okay. buying long-term storable foods. Oh. I lived through that several years ago. We, as I had my house, we stored um, water, rice, uh, kerosene. That was like um, several barrels of kerosene because it's most efficient way of to live through through the cold, and kerosene heater, and um, lots of matches and lighters, um, toilet paper. Um, Salt, and that's about it. And um, crank radio and crank uh, flashlights. So crank radio and crank flashlight is is absolutely something which you need. If if it if it goes more than three days and your cell phone is not working, crank radio is the main source of uh, you know you have to know where to run, right? Where to move. If you like the main decision you you you, you do is. Whether you stay where you are, you got, or you or you run. Um, I'm collecting for the whole of my life. I'm collecting uh, the stories of people running away, and in most cases, these are nice stories. You run away, drop all your belongings, you run away, and you survive. Like my ancestors did, that, especially on Jewish side. It's that's the typical Jewish history. You have to run away, like. Uh, exodus from Egypt, right? Uh, exodus from Spain, you, uh, Exodus from Poland and Russia, uh, immigration waves. Um, you have to know where to move and when to move. Like if uh, economy goes down in a way that there is no water supply, San Diego can uh, provide only for a certain number of people. If uh, the fuel supply goes down on the north. You have to move south for the winter because we just, um, you know, there is not enough wood for everybody to 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 keep the houses warm. So all these considerations, like you know, being prepared to move is more important than storing tons of food because food is uh, you can live on so much food. You can get some you know, through the winter, but you need heat and water. Uh, so so running away sometimes is more important. Um, but there were cases when people would uh, run away, and that would be a wrong decision, right? Um, I would say, you know, be informed, and being informed in um, in the crisis situation is is uh, is an art. You know, meditation and connection is important. If, and if you get a spiritual message, move now, listen to it. If you get a spiritual message, stay here. It will be all right. Do that. But you know, I would, and different people are very different. Some people would hold the ground, and some people would move at any sign of the of the danger. I would be prepared just to get into the transport, whatever it is, and move out of the big city, wait, and then come back later. Um, but there were cases, yeah, when when you move, like uh, Moscow was surrounded by Germans in the war, and uh, one of the stories I read, the person ran away with her mother, and, and, and running away from surrounding Moscow wasn't easy, so you have to get a pass and so on. So ended, they ended up in their Siberian village. Uh, they were directed by the government, as usual, uh, to, in the Siberian village, and uh, Moscow survived. But there, in, in in the village, they weren't able to survive. Her mother died just from hunger because. Locals wouldn't share the food and the heat and the wood. They they saw them as foreigners. They wouldn't share, and the government system didn't allow them to to survive, basically. So a daughter survived, but her mother didn't. So, you know, you really have to know where you go. 
but there were tons of cases where um, running away was the only way of survival. Like my favorite artist of Russia, his name is Smoktunovsky, like the best actor ever. Uh, his story is very inspirational, I would say. Um, as a young man, he was drafted in the army when Germans attacked. Uh, he was drafted, he was, I think, maybe 15 or 17, maybe 17. And he was captured by Germans. Um, and if you were captured by Germans, uh, you become a criminal in Russia. You are not supposed to be captured by the enemy, right? And in Germans, uh, in German encampment, uh, they were taken somewhere, and usually to concentration camps. And he had a good feeling that you don't want to go there, so he had to kill his guard. One, once in his life, he killed a person. He has to has to kill his young German guard, and run away. And this was on occupied territory, so he ran to the forest. He almost died from hunger there, because you know even in uh, summertime it's it's not easy to feed yourself in the forest. But finally, he stumbled upon uh, a little house with people, uh, only women because men went, went to war, and they kind of fed him, he survived, he recovered, and uh, joined the, the partisan division. Partisan meaning, I think they call it guerrillas in Russia, in English, guerrillas, sorry, They're guerrilla division, basically, a Russian army working in the German territory, uh, German occupied territory. So when the war ended, he was again in trouble because he was Russian who was captured and uh, those were pre persecuted. So he ran away now from Russians. <laughs> and he ran away to their place where he would be sent anyway as a prisoner. He went there as uh, a free person. So the farther you stay from the center, the, like it would be like riding to Alaska, I would say, in, in America. So he ran away to the northern part of Russia and ended up in a theater because he was an actor. So he ended up in a theater and he survived through hard times. And again, he was smart enough not to go to the center until their totalitarian regime ended, which was 50, 56, 1956. And then after all this terrible history, he became the best actor in Russia. Um, so. I know. Did he do wrong? I don't know if everybody is ready to kill their captive, but um, but um, uh, he had an instinct. He had, you know, if I, if I look at history of others, he had a perfect instinct where to where to run and when to run and when to to do the action and when to stay away from the capital and big city. Um, Angie wanted to say something, right? Yes. You will be directed in the direction that you need to go. What we have to remember first is in your area, as things begin to implode, you will have things for days. The furthest out will be approximately two weeks within any individual home. That information is there. That the food is there. The main thing then would be water. They're telling that you must have approximately one gallon per person per day. In regards to waste management, you would need two gallons of water per day, depending on the family size and the individual. You will know when things will need to be. You will get what you need. He was saying you will need your toiletries, your bath tissue, batteries, candles, crank radios, crank lights. That is what will be needed. After well, a like two week period if, if, if Go ahead. 
if it's the mo if mobility is the most important thing in a crisis situation, how do you strike that fine line of balance between being mobile and like all the stuff like the crank radios, the food, you know, the fill? How does that not weigh you down? Like, where is that fine line balance? There won't be. There won't be the upheaval or the frightenness of the people until after a period when they realize that it will not return quickly. Then people will go into the survival mode. When there is no power, there is nothing. You go back to the time of limited transportation. What will be then without be able to get the gas to move? You may be able to move some, but once that happens, then you can no longer go any further with a vehicle. You must go on foot. The disruption before chaos will only be a short time. And then people will go into survival mode, as Max has stated. Are there any questions? How long do you recommend, uh, you know, us, like, it would it be like three months, six months a year? Like, how long should we store food, like, have enough food to storage for? No more than eight weeks. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go crazy about that. Yes. I wouldn't go crazy about that. I try to store and it just becomes... You attract more trouble with that. Uh, mice grow, mice start eating the rice and things of that sort. Yeah, we got tons of good. mice in our house. <laughs> you know, the, 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 that um, bags with rice, you created the whole population of mice in the basement. <laughs> so then we st we had to buy um, plastic um, buckets and containers and close them so the mice won't get. But we still got mice. I think we when we left the mice were still there. Uh, but uh, you, can you know, not, not everybody has a house, so uh, go ahead. You can start fermenting food and and jarring it, like you know, putting it in mason jars. Like learn how to like um, uh, basically uh, c contain food in a way where you can store it for a long time. Ah, absolutely yes. I I I don't recommend going that far. I yes, when when the time times come. You know, it, usually you have warnings in advance. Right now, the warnings it's are just still. Just to have a supply, though, that you can have on hand that does not perish before um, something like that happens, and that's why the bottling and the jarring is good because you can store it for an extended period of time without it going bad. Okay, I agree. Uh, preparing for the, you know, learning how to live that way is absolutely essential. I don't want to spend the whole webinar just talking about uh, 3D details. I really want to go into 4D perspective, uh, the higher spiritual perspective. So a uh, short answer is go camping and uh, go camping often and see how can you minimize your uh, belongings in the camping, how much do you need to really do take. So that's just experience of camping in the wild without going to the nearest gas station to get more supplies will give you the idea because Russians, most of Russians live through that. It's natural, it's our it's second nature to us to survive it, you know. You can open, we can open the, the, the can of food without their things. 
which is called almost impossible unless you know what you do. Uh, with a can, without the can opener, can you open all the can of food, right? <laughs> like a, like a beer would would uh, would chew, chew on it until the, the food comes out, right? So uh, Chinese, all the third world countries, you know, they live with that daily. So they are absolutely prepared, most like generations still that that culture of living on natural things is there. But but the, you know, civilized countries like Central Europe and America, Western Europe and America, you know, that you, you guys have to uh, practice, practice. And, you know, lots of YouTube videos, some of them nonsense, some of them are uh, valuable. And just go into wilderness without electricity and experience that. It's very easy. And uh, the stories, I would invite more stories. Uh, even Jim, I, I'm, I'm sure Jim has stories about that. I'm, I'm sorry I interrupted him. He kind of just even went away disheartened, I would say. Jim, I'm sorry. But I, I really want to talk about how do you, what do you do spiritually to, to live through that? Because the main challenge is not is not physical. You know, living through Russian chaos, it wasn't a physical challenge. You know, we know what to do there. Like you become inventive, you do stuff, you share the things, you go around. But it's 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 the fear, picture of uncertainty, and. Um, not understanding what will happen. Uncertainty is the main factor. Like so, my parents died just from that that um, stress of uncertainty and losing the connection to the to the energies which flow. So how do you how do you live through the through the dark times spiritually? That's that's the topic. I invite questions and comments here. I think music would be good. If like you know, because music brightens up your soul. It does when you like listen to like music. It, it yeah. encourages you to go on. So, um, singing, yeah, you you drum on a cardboard and sing, absolutely. Singing and chanting, that's what I do. Like nowadays, I, I sing like half a day, uh, not half a day, a couple hours a day I would chant. And as you chant, you pray, and you put there an intention of divine help. You connect to the God, and to me these days it's connection to a feminine aspect of God. So imagine Godfather is nice as a protector and ruler, and Godmother is, the great mother, is something like much closer, much more nurturing. So, you know, if you if you are not there yet, try praying to Divine Mother, to Great Mother, and you just a new door is opening to that connection, to that connection, because you feel loved, feel supported, and keep in mind it's all an illusion, right? It's all an illusion. That's why it is permitted. It is an illusion. So, you go through this game, through this illusionary game. You experience the big drama, but then you come out recovered, refreshed, and you rebuild the whole illusion in a new way. So it's it's just realizing it is an illusion is absolutely essential. It is illusion personal, it is illusion collective. So the whole world might drop into the illusion of, of destruction and then come out of that refresh. Jim, are you ready there to speak? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm sorry if I uh, that I interrupted uh, Ish, but I really wanted to see the positive spiritual perspective of the experience. I think that um, it it was all positive. There was no negative really. So um, what I have to say is that I think that many people are going to be protected, uh, and I think that a lot of direction will be given at the at the right times. Uh, there is preparation that's going to be needed. I think that it's going to be, uh, and that's why you're doing this as you're doing it now. And people just have to put the correct perspective on, on it. That's all. Uh, I know that there's negatives and positives to all these things. And I know the angels are here to, uh, to talk about that as well. So, um, but as far as I'm concerned, I... I know from 
experience that uh, we are protected in many ways from with spirit. So I'm not really that worried about it. I am going to prepare for it, but I am not going to worry about it day by day because it's something that's inevitable and it's something that we will deal with at the time. And I think that we're, our, our instincts and our understanding of our, where we are will give us some idea of what we need to do. But um, having said that, it is good to talk about it, to prepare for it, and the negative dis does bring out the positive in the sense that uh, I understand what Ish was talking about. Um, he was preparing you, he was showing you that you do need to be concerned, but he was also saying, he was also not trying to frighten anybody, but just to let you know that there are some people that are still not prepared to hear the truth. So, Thank you. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to share some of your stories or do you want to channel? Uh, my story is about what? Um, survival? Survival and spiritual <laughs> guidance. Like recently you went through the crisis of losing sight. How did you go through that? Um, the crisis of what? Losing vision, sight. Yes. Um, I had a retreat just recently. Um, and to uh, to and I was supposed to go and learn some things, and I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I knew that I had to not do sessions and uh, be, be on my own and be in prayer and introspection. But um, what happened was that uh, I saw th some things that are going to come. Yes, but it is not actually for me to share that. What is to be shared is that we all have to prepare ourselves with some prayer and introspection and with some um, with some purging of, of who we, uh, you know, not who we were, are but who we were and um, bring in the most positive aspects so that we can deal with everything in the right perspective. Because if you panic or if you depend on others, they're going to let you down in some way or another. You're not go it's not going to be done the way it's, m it's meant to be done. So they just let me know that these introspections, these thought processes were meant to, to put me in a balance, to put me in a thought process that was grounded and that I could pull up through and get the right answers. Because when you pray, sometimes the answer doesn't come right this second. But with this kind of thing that we're going to be experiencing, it's going to, it's going to come pretty fast. If you, you're going to know what to do. You're going to get some uh, ideas pretty fast on where to go and what to do. All right. So... so my point is that Jim is as close to Avatar, as close to the saint as you can do. He, he, he has a direct phone line to God. Uh, he has he's been guided in a huge way. And uh, it didn't come all at once. He grew up into that. And other people would, you know, what happened to him? He, he lost a job, right? And he never got a job since. He had a nice job, and then he's not needed anymore. He's old, and uh, his vision is not good, and uh, he's strong, but otherwise he is not a good employable person. And then he lost the vision. Uh, at some point, like when we started, he broke his car because um, he couldn't see. He still was driving, and surprise, he hit some other car because he didn't see the car. I don't know why, but he, the vision wasn't there. So, and then now he, he can't drive at all, right? Um, I don't drive at all. <laughs> right, so, and then somehow miraculously he started doing Reiki, he started doing channeling, and became a leader in a community, online community, and locally also. And he keeps it up. So, the one of the, the business models he has, the, the business model, possible for some of you is 
you know, you do your free webinars. Once a week, as a job, he does his free Saturday webinar and builds his audience. All right? It's just free offering, and that gives him the publicity, which gives him the the private no. sessions, private clients, and also it gives him the Reiki clients, and somehow okay. that service uh, keeps 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 him going. Now, when mm. things happen, come to gym and form a spiritual commune right around gym because. There is a magnet which attracts you. If you are near gym, you will be fine, right? You know, if you can I'm, walk to gym I'm from New York that State, way. <laughs> if you walk to gym from New York, from New York City, it's like a week of walking, maybe two weeks of walking. But you will get there, and you will be fine because there is spiritual oh. guidance, and there is magnetism, and there is. Uh, protection which, which comes with the gym. Wow. What he does now professionally, he fixes your life just by bringing the spirit down. So you have all that capacity to grow up into the avatar state when you're not only healing the people, you're healing the events. And finally you will be healing the whole global situation. Okay. All global situation. Can I say something? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I I wanted to say I'm really not a saint. I'm just a tool. Um, but I'm I let myself get used by the spirits, by whoever needs to help, whoever is there. And by being a tool, you can be a tool as well. And uh, you all are being a, t a, a tool, I, a instrument, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's it's just being used, letting yourself be used in a proper way and knowing that the right, the right spirits, the right beings are coming to give you the right information. And all of you can have that as well. Uh, I was chosen for this. I, I don't know why, but I was chosen for this and because I, would, I didn't even know what channeling was when it started. So he had, uh, Max had to sort of inform me what it was and give me a little bit of guidance and gave me some Bashar tapes and stuff. But um, I realize now that I would never want to be any other place than where I am right now because I'm being used, I'm being... Uh, there's miracles happening. You're right. I've seen many miracles happen with many people. So And it's not me. So I can't say that it's, it's me that's doing miracles. It's the spirit. In, in me and the spirit coming to me and what they want to do, what their mission is for the people of the earth. And so this is something, they're going to guide us through this. They are, because you are the builders of the new world. You are the builders of the new world. That's why you're here. You're going to be preparing for uh, something that's going to happen. We don't know what it's going to be like. We don't know exactly what it's going to be like. They're preparing us for the worst case scenario. They're preparing us for the worst case scenario so that all of you will survive. So that all of you can be part of the reconstruction because your ideas are important. They're telling me that right now. They're saying these are the people that are going to be important to the reconstruction, the, be important to the things that happen afterwards. So they will survive because the ones that will survive were the ones that are going to be important. You are all going to be used in a great way and you already are. Some of you are already far beyond where the human population is understanding of fourth dimensional energy and advancement. So therefore, my thought to you is don't be afraid. Face it head on, be positive, get through it, and help the world rise. Because you're helping the world rise now. 
And I know that there is preparation. There's places to go. There's things that you have to do. But this is an opportunity. Once it come, once you get through it, it will be a huge opportunity for all of you to be more of a leader than you ever were before, more of a guide than you ever were before, more of a light to the world than you ever were before. And they are using me now in that capacity because I'm letting them do so. It's not that I'm a saint. It's, I am very third dimensional at times. I love the third dimension. I love being in the third dimension with my friends and families. But you know what? When the spirit takes hold and wants to use me, I allow it. But I always make sure that I'm protected and I always make sure that it's positive. But you know what? I allow it. And that's when miracles happen. Not because you're a saint. Because I don't consider myself a saint. But because you're obedient. Obedient to what the spirit wants. Okay? And if they want to heal somebody, they will. If, if they want to reach out and give you some gift, they will. If they want to bring you through a tragedy, they will. If they want to keep you from harm's way and keep you out of fear's way, they will. But if they need you to learn a lesson through this experience, you'll learn it. And that will build your character so that you'll be able to do what it is that you are going to do on the other side. Do you understand that? This is a wonderful time of preparation, but it's also a time for your preparation in your mind. You don't have to be a saint. I, am, I can tell you that. But you do have to be willing to listen and obey when that time comes. Absolutely. If we were all meant to be saints... There's no way. I could never be a saint. I could never be a saint. I could never abide by those kinds of high rules. But I can let spirit work when he needs to. Do you understand that? Absolutely. I, uh, I just wanted to confirm that that's the message I got. The same message. I was standing in the shower and I, aha, I got the message. So basically you become the world government. <laughs> Uh, you, the light workers, become the greed. I call it the greed. Uh, the greed you which upholds your areas. Yeah. Upholds the vibration. Uh, possibly there will be 3D leaders and spiritual leaders, as it was in the past. That's how it was in the past. There is a shaman and a tribe uh, leader, tribe leader and a shaman. So. You become avatars, shamans, uh, spiritual leaders, but uh, you are connected. So you know what to do. You you will get help. You will get right hand, left hand, the circle around you, but you will know what to do. And you will and, know that it's God speaking to you if you are fair, honest, well-balanced, and people are trusting you. Because if they don't trust you, then God is not really there. Somebody else. But when God is there, you draw people. People are drawn to that. People are drawn to the honesty, to the, to the beauty of God, to his healing, to his work, to his wisdom. So therefore, be a, be a light. Don't be afraid because people are not drawn. Oh, I know people are drawn drawn to fear, but they but they're not drawn to fearful leaders. They are not drawn to fearful leaders. Do you understand that? You must be confident. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's you know when when we I, I I say Jim I'm afraid of that you know and I'm suspicious of that and here is a plot against me or here is uh, some negative thing which disaster is coming. Uh, he gives me upliftment all the time. That is like it's it's habitual now. It's like problem solved, spiritual pro like same thing can be interpreted in positive and negative way. And 
you know, he gets this positive twist on everything. Like, everything's happened, and then you lift it up. So you become spiritual weightlifter. You already do it now. Some people think these are hard times. And my understanding, these are the highest times, economic times on Earth. Last, say, 20 years, the last 10 years. This boom with electronics. It's the highest point, the golden age. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can live through this hard time and think, oh, disaster is already happening. And maybe not. Maybe use this time for upliftment and practice you uplifting yourself, uplifting people around you, uplifting the vibration, heavy lift, just light, how do they say, lifters. Uh, comments, questions? Uh. Jim? Yes? I just wanted to, to say that I know that a lot of you are just going... Oh my God! Uh, I'm thinking about what was just said and what what the Max just said, what I just said, and don't be afraid of that because um, this is what is is supposed to be. It's the way that it's supposed to happen. Things are moving forward. You see, I see things in my life and the people's lives all around me. Angie's had a hundred miracles. David's had a hundred miracles. In many senses, the people that are around my areas are experiencing the miracles that need to happen because this is this is a place of miracles, really. And it, you know what? It's it's amazing and wonderful, but it's not any more surprising at this time. It's like, wow, what? I wonder what miracle is going to happen next. All right. You you expect the miracles to happen. You expect it to continue because God is really working. And um, he's going to start doing miracles for everyone who is obedient. Uh, and like I said, you don't have to be a saint. You don't have to follow all those rules that people put fear into your life. If, I, if you don't put, follow this rule, you're going, to be, you're going to be cast out. You're going to be... Uh, forsaken, God's not going to listen to you. Follow the rules of your heart because those are the rules that you, you were put there for you to live by. Not the rules of man. The rules that are in your heart because they're the guidelines to what is right for you in your life. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Your conscience, your conscience if you have been a good person all your life, your conscience is going to tell you what is good and what is right and what to do. It's, it's not going to be like you're going to be harming and hurting people and being unfair. Your conscience is going to be alive and very sensitive. So just like the conscience of humanity is sometimes very dull, society is, has a dull conscience. But if you are alive in, in, your own, in your own heart and follow what you think is right, then your conscience will be alive. Nathan, can you mute your mic? There is noise from your phone. Nathan, can you mute your mic, mic microphone? Just press the oh, mute I button. I can't mute it. I'll just turn it down. Done. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. So... Um, what are the steps? And the steps are three steps. Reiki, channeling, meditation. Right, Reiki, channeling, meditation. As you... Reiki allows you to um, open your heart chakra. Uh, channeling opens your fifth chakra. And meditation connects all higher chakras and all chakras together to get you into the uh, bliss, bliss state. Mm. Thank you, Peter. Also, I just wanted to say there is a Reiki and cha uh, channeling and uh, meditation. Yes, they go together very, very well. But there are people that never did Reiki and still are channeling. But if you learn Reiki, you will also 
open your energies up to other things as well. So all kinds of energy work are important. You don't necessarily have to take Reiki to have a great deal of energy work, but it is helpful. It's just one thing to do to help yeah, your energy I'm okay. increase and help it to channel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, when I say Reiki, it's not necessarily no. a, um, Reiki. Not up there. Uh, Nathan, I'm sorry. I have to. I have to eject you. You're just. Um, I'm sorry. There is too much noise coming from you. Done. All right. So um, the energy work can be yoga. It can be any sort of tai chi, qigong, qi qigong, uh, any any energy work. But basically, as you become and as your higher chakras become uh, activated, you start affecting not only yourself, your own health. You affect other people and the reality around you. So some people work mostly not not with healing but with the business. So their ability to shift the reality around you works through the business, for example. Like uh, Stephen Greer is famous for his, how do you call it, reality modification field. There was another, how do you call it, reality transformation field. I forgot the, the keyword. Uh, Stephen Jobs, Stephen Jobs, reality transformation field. Anybody remembers that? Let's call it reality transformation field. But basically, in his presence, things would uh, things would uh, basically would would become miraculous. He would put so much willpower from the third chakra and so much power from other chakras so the whole reality would shift around him and um, and he would make things possible which otherwise wouldn't and that was hard in, in all times but now it becomes a common practice so Jim is doing it now professionally routinely for everybody and I feel that capacity of changing the reality around you Kind of comes to us and becomes a second nature. Uh, meditation, uh, meditation is key now. You know, when when you have a regular eight-hour job per day, you know, finding the time during the day for meditation. Maybe you have to do it after work, but find the time. And also, there are some actions where you can meditate during doing something, like washing dishes, driving the car. You can still do your meditation. So. Uh, Jim, how how often do you are you aware of the divine, and how often do you talk to the divine during the day? How much time you are not talking to the divine? I'm actually before every session or uh, at any channeling session, any Reiki session, I speak to uh, do it some kind of meditation, and also when I wake up in the morning, I do meditation. So it's uh, uh, but. There are some times where, when, during this period of time in the last few weeks where I was not doing sessions and things, I would just walk around and talk to God. I, I don't know if it was a meditation as much as just a, a conversation, but I did connect with God and to others, uh, some of the other aliens and spirits, just through conversation. I did do some meditation, of course. And a lot of the time, I would do it in my when I woke up in the morning. I would take a long time to get out of bed for that day because I knew that there was nothing planned, and I would just spend a lot of time in gratefulness and thankfulness and prayer. But then when I got up, it would be like I felt like I needed to say something else or maybe just have a conversation. I just started talking to God or talking to whoever I thought was there, uh, or some people would make themselves known, and I would just chat with them. It wasn't that I was in deep prayer or meditation, but I was chatting and letting them know it was on my heart and mind, and letting them know that I was listening, that I was uh, going to be doing certain things. I am a very third dimensional person much of the time. I like my friends. I like my family. I like doing fun things. I eat out a lot. I do a lot of things. So I it's not that I'm sequestered or cloistered in a place without anyone around me. I I'm very interactive. 
but I also am interactive with the spirit and everybody around me. So when there's no one around, I just sometimes just talk. And maybe some people think that's crazy, but I get um, I get a very good feeling about that. I know they're listening. I know that they're understanding where I'm at and how to help me, and they do do help me quite a lot. I just wanted to comment. Uh, if you haven't watched Fiddler on the Roof recently, that musical movie, <laughs> check it out. It's an uh, it's, uh, encyclopedia. Just, you know, it's preparation for the disaster. And remember, he talks to the God all the time. You know, the, the Tevye, he talks to the God all the time. That's what we do. We talk to the God all the time. And the disaster is coming. And if you notice, there is a rabbi there. And even the, in the hardest of time, when the whole village is closed, he's like Jim smiling taking it easy and saying, all right, we'll go through that as we went through all other disasters. We'll just go through that. We'll move on. Things will continue. So that state of their, it's saintly state of, you know, Buddha state where you have that inner smile. Maybe even if you are sad, you still have that smile inside. You uplift yourself to be in that state. You take it easy as an illusion. It's all just a prompt. A drama is a prompt for your lessons and for global lessons and for the transformation. You see, there is no transformation without some sort of... Some things have to go up. For, for some things to go up, some things have to go down. That is, something replaces something. So, so, Fiddler on the Roof, it would be like movie number one I would recommend and watch it like daily. There is music, there is idea of the disaster going, you go through the disaster, but you go through and come out. You go through and come out, and you keep yourself uplifted. There is that, uh, another idea there, do you bend or you break, right? Some things you really can bend and bend and bend, yeah. and some things you, you, you have the core, you can't really bend it, right? So some people during the disaster, they're fluid like me. I would move away, I would shift, I would adapt, I would adapt very fast, seconds, minutes. But it takes toll, but you, you would be fluid and you would adapt. And I use my now consciously, I use my shape, shape shifter, Yael, Yael shape shifter talent, genetics, experience, past life, Yael, shapeshifter. Remember shapeshifters in uh, Star Trek, you can go through the walls, you can sneak through, you can adapt, you can change yourself. You remain yourself while you shapeshift. So, so bring that image to yourself. When things change in the round, you might need to change. Like how do you go through the security door? Like there is a security. In Russia, it's everywhere, right? In, in here, it might be two. Security, border patrol, blah, blah, blah. You, you, sometimes you have to go home, you have to go through the guards, right? You shape shift. You take a shape of a person who they would accept as, as their own. You know, um, travel, travel around. Travel to the places and you have to shape shift. You have to take the shape of the environment. You have to take a shape of the local. You have to take, like there are some suspicious people around. You have to take the proper shape which wouldn't cause their attack. In Russia, it's like it's second nature. You go on the street, you're, you see criminals, and you take some sort of protection and face and shape of your psyche, so you will go through that unnoticed. Tons of people do that. It's second nature. And the second quality, you go on the street which is dangerous, like at night or something, and you listen to inner voice, and sometimes it says, don't go there. Take a route around, spend an extra 40 minutes going around, just turn back. Don't go there, and you listen. How many times in your life you had to like turn back for no reason? 
in my time, maybe 100. We just walk on the street, and their voice says, don't go there. All right, thank you. <laughs> you make a circle, and then you wouldn't go there, right? Olga, do you want to share any of those experiences? <laughs> yeah, you have to go to, yeah, sit down. No, 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 it would be helpful. Inner voice. How do you listen to inner voice? How do you live in Russia? Sit down. Uh, yeah, just intuition. Like, uh, I don't know. I think I have it since uh, my childhood, since I was very little. And also symbols. If I see symbols or some key or some, like, uh, for example, okay, I was looking for another job, so um, I go to different interview and... Um, I have a choice, go to this hospital or that hospital. And on the first interview, when I go, the first of all, it's like elevator didn't work. And then I wait for long until the manager will come. And I don't really remember, something else happens. So I got the message, I think it's very direct message, like you, you're not supposed to work here. You just, not like they told me no, or but it's something inside me, I'll say, Something happens. I don't want to go there because too many um, signs. Um, signs. Yeah, many signs. I, I feel just signs and just just listen. Sometimes you uh, walk somewhere and all of a sudden you see some um, something written, some signs, or and you can apply to your situation. Depends what you're thinking about. It is like oh. Okay, so that's probably the answer to my situation. And I don't know. I, I need to think. I probably have a lot of in my life. You also work as a nurse. Yes. And that's like a concentrated disaster every day. How do you go through that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's more disaster with uh, political systems that with uh, like... Administration. Administration or the... Can I say that? Silly new policy, 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 then in a couple of years they said, oh, it was wrong, forget it, and then they create a new one and they oh, we're wrong. So they just, uh, administration work here to prove they, they need for but, something. But spiritually, how do you uh, survive that? What, what, what do yeah, you do? Yeah, cry. <laughs> do you have it, some shields in, some shields, some protection? No, no, no uh, it's, it's kind of depend to... To some patients, I do feel connection. I feel sorry and feel empathy. To some patients, I don't feel anything. And since I'm doing Reiki, uh, for some patients, I feel like I need to give them Reiki along with uh, regular treatment. And, you know, it's official. Reiki is official in hospital. Do you know this? No, I didn't. Yeah. In California uh, or anywhere? I don't know. In my hospital, and Sharp Hospital is considered to be really um, one of the most... Uh, one of the best hospitals and when you charting and in the chart like when you're doing computer you need to assess and chart your patient assessment they offer you okay if patient in pain what would you do like medication destruction change position and then it says Reiki so it's I I was uh, really surprised. It's been like maybe even ten years ago when I see it, and I said, "Huh, we do it really in the hospital. Um, we're doing Reiki, and like ninety-nine percent of people make fun of it. But when I do to my patients, um, it, it's funny. It's like I did it one, um, did a couple times." And it helps to remove the pain. And I offer patient, okay, do you want to try this? Instead of morphine, I do Reiki. And I did it just a couple minutes, and he fell asleep, and he's been pain free. And the next couple days, I didn't have this patient. I have another patient's group. And so I even didn't have time to check on him. He's been very upset, and he just <laughs> followed me and said, can you do Reiki? Can you do Reiki? And I said, sorry, I'm so busy. So he really, <laughs> he really been upset that I can do it to him anymore. And it's probably, I'm talking about a little bit different uh, spiritual, but um, another patient would, I try to do Reiki for her, and I think, it doesn't work. What's wrong? And then I look, oh, yes, of course. She has cardiac monitor. She has this all metallic leads, and I uh, take it off, like, for a couple minutes, and then she's been free of pain, and it works. Wow. 
Yeah, so uh, spiritually, um, I exist what I'm doing at work, but um, Do you most pray? of Do you the time, to? no, I, I don't really have time for it. Uh -huh. um, sometimes it's just like intention, it's just like couple couple seconds, couple minutes, I have some intention uh, about my assignment or something, and yes, like it, it's work a different way, like um, I don't know, it depends of um, mm, Do you, like want, it helps. Do you want yeah. to share the, the Russian experiences of survival? Over there? Yeah. Um, moving, moving around, war experiences, all that. <laughs> How did you survive through perestroika? It's been, I left about almost 25 years ago, so it just started. The horrible times just started, and at that time, yeah, I've always been spiritual, but I didn't know about Reiki, but why did I, you move to America? Oh, that's also interesting. Uh, only because my ex-husband. I never want to go here, actually. Never think about this. And it wasn't too bad at the times when he started, OK, we need to go. We need to immigrate. And I don't want to talk about my ex-husband. It's, it's like it's like horror. It's, I've been miserable. That's my probably mm, life lessons. So, But anyway. I didn't want to go anywhere. I said, OK, if you want to go, go. And then we apply through um, uh, American um, Immigration? Yeah, we did apply. He applied, and he told me, OK, sign your name. I said, yeah, it's OK. I was hoping that they don't let us go, because I didn't want to change anything. So I did put my name, and I did put my name of my parents, even they say, we never go, just like, don't even tell about immigration. But I thought, OK, if they not let us, OK, if they let us go and don't take my patience, and then um, parents. parents, I'm sorry. Right, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so I let my husband go, I mean, so I'm I'm not gonna go anywhere without my parents because uh, I don't have sisters, I don't have brothers. I just have my children and my parents, and um, surprisingly, yes, yeah, they did let us go. And with at parents. this time, with the parents, and at this time, my parents already felt like, yeah, something went wrong. We need to leave this country. And what year was it? Ah, uh, it was 1992. Yep. Yes, 92. Right after the big crisis. Yes, yeah. and uh, this was kind of scary already. And this was start scary situation. And like, you can't even buy a bread. You stay in the line. And it's never been like this before. So uh, talking about the crime situation over there, like I said, so many years ago, I didn't think too much about spirituality, but I know if I see somebody, some gang or some strange people, I'm just something inside me telling me, okay, just ignore them, just just walk, don't even look on them, just ignore and say I knew it, they're not gonna touch me because like. Mm, <laughs> they not really see me because we on different vibrations and I didn't know about this all details but many years since I when I read like <laughs> their souls or their or no not souls but physical body or something it's different vibrations so they right. don't even see you because like I'm higher not like uh, try to tell that the words. No, they, we all have different lessons. So at this lifetime, my vibration higher, and they just don't see me. I'm not belong to this world. I hope so. So any questions to Olga? Mm -hmm. How was the life? Uh, so when there was no, you cannot buy bread. What did you do? Go to farmer market. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have a have great. Money, what do you do? <laughs> we we did have enough money to eat at this time, but it it. Did you have to sell something? Mm, did you no. have savings? Yeah, we probably did some. We 
we never been in the really bad situation, but like I can see, okay, all our savings just disappear in one day. It was like ninety two, I think. Uh huh. Um, yeah, the just banks just closed. Yes, and just it. like, and not like it, it's been scary because my older daughter, she was little, she was like three, four years old, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, it's what harder she's when gonna you eat. Children, yeah. Yes, and I remember like only way we can go, we go to farmer markets and I couldn't allow myself. Okay, there is like kiwi and banana. We never see these fruits in my in Ukraine ever. <laughs> and of course she wanna try. And I bought one banana for her and one kiwi and I remember like she ate banana and I'm just licking the skin of banana and <laughs> It, uh, I feel so bad. Like I said, yeah, okay. my, my my wife remembers um, eating orange peels. The same, yeah, the same. Like peels, yeah. my father was a doctor, so as a doctor in um, the hospital, when he have his night shift, he's supposed to have some um, some food, something, and one oranges. And of course, he brought this one orange home. <laughs> for his granddaughter, for my daughter, she ate it, and I, yeah, I was just licking the skin of it. Yeah, we were hungry. Yeah, children were hungry. Yeah, that that was the scariest thing because I don't want my children to suffer, you know, like. And um, I never knew did I do right step to immigrate, even it was bad. But when I when I uh, start uh, learning Reiki, not learning, just happens that I got Reiki initiation and a lot of things start happening and my younger daughter was born so looking um, behind, far behind, I can understand why, why I'm here and why I'm doing what I'm doing here. So there was guidance. Yes, and I I think like we all have at least three um, three way three different directions in our life, and I think it was the hardest for me to go through the horrible marriage, the first marriage, and so I did got my lesson and um, I was computer programmer in Ukraine and. I realized I, I hate it, so it's been strange. So um, when I came here, now I'm registered nurse in the hospital. So I did do what I'm supposed to do, but the hardest way, I think. I didn't get education for medical field in Ukraine, but only got to this country. I have ability to do this and ability to do a lot of spiritual things. Thank you. Well, let me sure. grab the microphone. All right. So, questions and comments. Hello? We hear you. Any comments and questions? I thought that was very good that she spoke about that. It was very interesting. And it does give you, you a sense of what other places are like at different times and during different situations. So that was informative. I know. Have, have any of you slept on the street? I had that experience. Wow. And the problem with sleeping on the, on the street is not that it's not convenient, but it's dangerous, right? There is police which can arrest you. There is there are other people that can harm you. So finding a place where you're safe is not easy. And when you find it, you, you discover that other b people without uh, shelter also find it. So you end up in a company. Sometimes it's a good company, sometimes, and, and most often it's not that good company. So yeah, exp travel and experience in that, like having no documents and stuff like that. I don't know in, in America 
it's okay not to have documents, but in the rest of the world, you got to get passport or other ID, but usually it's a passport. Like my friend, uh, at some point, lost his uh, uh, documents. He was in Italy. His car was stolen with the documents in the car. And because of that, he was disconnected from his family. And for nine years, he couldn't get to his uh, wife and daughter daughters in America. So his wives were there. And Americans refused him the new visa. The visa was in the, in the passport. So that was one case. Uh, another case, in my ancestors, they were running away from Nazis. And they were Jews in Latvia, so they had to run away to Russia. That was the only one, like from one totalitarian place to another totalitarian place, and uh, they lost the documents on the way. The briefcase with documents was stolen, so that made their lives so much harder. They made it; they survived, so they, they, they their ancestors live now. But, but basically, you need to hold on to your stuff. Chinese are really good in that. Like the rest of the world. They know you have to hold on to your passport. You have to hold on to your money. Uh, if you carry carry a lot of money, say say you know, when the crisis comes, first thing you need to do, do is actually to go to the bank and cash whatever you have. And you have to do it first because banks will close, and the rest of the world won't be able to get the cash. And the cash is useful, absolutely. When electronics goes down, the cash becomes invaluable. The cash actually goes up in, in price. So storing the cash like a thousand dollars would be nice if you have it. So go cash your money. And then carrying that on the street is and if you're on the run, you have to carry it. Um, there's a lot of ways to hide money, but my favorite is in the shoes under the how do you call that thing under the shoes? How do you call it? I don't know the name of it. The flat thing in the shoe and so under the insert. Um, that would be the last thing people would look for. I mean, the money get a little squished and wet, but you can wrap it in a plastic bag. And a thousand dollars is wearable this way, even five thousand dollars. That's how I did it. In Russia, if you have to like carry the money, you know, you have to hide it. In yeah, learning how to sew with the needle and threads and make a little pocket in your briefs or something like that. I mean, a little belt underneath. <laughs> Little tricks, how do you carry the money around? But you know, carrying food, water, and money on the run is important, and documents. All right, uh, welcome, Sabrina. Don't want to give us a blessing. Any comments, questions so far? I'll tell you another story. Hello, oh, everybody. Uh, yes. Oh, no, I was just saying hello. Oh. I'll tell you another story. Um, other ancestors, uh, Jews in uh, Lithuania, it was a time of celebration. The German army was approaching 1939. The German army is approaching, and people who were in the know, who were following the news, they knew it, you have to escape. I mean, Germans were absolutely open about the idea that they would exterminate all the Jews. So people in the know already left. And there is tons of people who are not following the news, who are, don't pay attention, who are like German culture, like German food, like German things. And uh, Lithuania was at that time very Germanized. So they didn't know. And they celebrated. And there were like my ancestors, relatives of my ancestors, young people, five young people decided, you know, their parents said, you know, go. We will stay, we can move, but you got to go. So five people got on the bicycles. It was already the time when you can get the transport. And one of them couldn't go because he had a date. Maybe the sixth one. 
So the sixth one could had a date at that time, and he went to a date, and they had dance party and stuff like that. And five people, you know, decided to go. Young people, 16 years old, they bicycled through the whole Lithuania to the Russian border, and they had to hide in the bushes. They had to like they the were local population weren't welcoming them. They knew that the Jews running away from Germans, and when they got to the border. They have been shot from the villages. They would sh shoot into Jews running away. So there was that that much negativity. And they got to the border. They couldn't cross it because the Russian army was protecting it. So Germans are coming from one side, and Russians are protecting from another side. And you're being shot at. Um, so they would hide in the bushes, and there is no cell phone, no information, very little information. But basically. They would talk to locals. They would talk to other people who run around. They felt that Russians are moving, running away too. And you see, you hear all the time. You hear the bombs falling down from from German planes. There is noise in the air. The planes are running around, especially in in, in the capital, and then coming closer. They they hear Germans coming, and the border patrol also hears Germans coming. And they're on bicycles, like sitting in the bushes all the time. With a little bit of food and documents, maybe. So at the last moment, most of the Russian army ran away, and the border patrol on on the border they took a bribe, whatever it was, I don't know, gold maybe, and let them through. And they got on the train, got to the Siberia, and survived. And now I have an ancestor telling the story how it happened. But you know, the rest of the the rest of the Jewish population vanished. You know, in Lithuania it was like 100 percent. One person from the same family was survi survived because they were taken to the concentration camp, and uh, the mother carrying the child bribed the guard to let the child through the gate out, and then the child survived. Somebody took care of him. I think he was picked up by by, by friends. And another case in the same city was another relative survived. Uh, a girl of maybe six years old. She had to leave. She lived with Lit Lithuanians, who saved her, a Jewish girl. But every time Germans would come, she would hide under the bed. And it was like once a week she would sit under the bed and without sneezing, for the time the Germans were there. Maybe they would have a meal and you know, have a talk and laugh and drink and then left. So she would sit under under the bed. It's a small apartment. There is no pl other place to hide under the bed, just hidden. Um, you got to go through that and then survive. It's um, you get used to that. It becomes a <laughs> you know people survive through concentration camps and now and uh, when I was married there you know uh, the rabbi who served was um, yeah he was. He escaped from a concentration camp, ran to America, became a, a, an aviation pilot, and fought on American side against the Germans. So, so you know, we are, we still have that that close connection to people who live there. And uh, in Europe, it's much closer. It's like close relatives. Any comments, questions so far? What to do? No, don't have to do, but you can do. If things come, uh, if the things come, their uh, economy goes down, their supplies go down, start networking right away. That is the time when people are open. You wouldn't be shut yet. Some, you know, people are still open. People are still in the, wanting to know. So, knocking on the doors of neighbors, saying, "I live next door. Let's coordinate. Let's cooperate. Let's exchange the news. Let's exchange the." Supplies. In some countries, it is not possible. People wouldn't trust you anyway. But in America, I'm pretty sure it will be possible. So knocking on the doors, forming the local committee, forming the uh, information network, uh, finding a local doctor, finding the local people with weapons who would be able to protect, forming a commune around, like not not exactly a commune, but forming a community is would be very smart. And then the uh, 
if the civil economy goes down, the army economy and the government economy will continue. The army has backup for years. So there will be still some army bases which will have pretty good supply of everything, of electricity, fuel, food. So finding a job on army base would be a possible solution. They would still need jobs. They would need. They would be like a city service service in the army base because they would have everything. They were still their own economy. So, actually, yeah, army bases are are will, will be still there. There will be cows around. There will be maybe some uh, city services like police departments still running and uh, army bases. So that's how people survived in in Russia. That's how people people survive in other countries, there is still that core of of uh, army which which is still there. So going also to the local town uh, town hall and uh, finding what's what's happening, finding out and finding a job there, volunteering actually it wouldn't be paid, but volunteering there, volunteering in the hospital, if there is still some hospital work and volunteering in the hospital would allow you to be connected to the network of people. It sounds scary, but uh, that's what I would do. Absolutely. Like, you know, I'm building communities now. I, I co-founded this community. I'm building a community locally here that is like a Russian community which uh, meets every uh, month. And we, right now it's not a community, it's just a crowd of people. But uh, every month I'm and it's about 70 people coming, random people coming together, I think we can form a community as well. And having the, the, the friends helps a lot. Moving together, for like, it's much more efficient if you're together. The only disadvantage is there is infections, so if, if there is a crowded place, you might get catch all, all the infections. So you got to have uh, antibiotics stored, you know, get antibiotics. It's, it's, it's illegal in America to, 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 to buy more antibiotics than you, you consume, but it's possible. You can order online for extra money from Canada. You can store up antibiotics in your freezer. Um, anti, antibacterial ointments, anti uh, yeast, how do you say, yeast um, ointment, um, it's called f food, food, at athlete's food, athlete's food, uh, cream is essential in the, in the times of uh, antibacterial cream, athletes food cream, and antibiotics. Essential, like to to survive through, because there is no water you can't wash, so you get lots of rushes. So how do you how much water do you need to wash yourself? Uh, in Russia, we can handle maybe half a gallon. Maybe one quarter of the gallon is sufficient. And washing your clothes in mean you can wash your clothes in a San Diego and salt water, but uh, washing and drying your clothes. Now in these hard times, if you become sort of disorganized, you lose your cleanliness, you lose your status. So right now Americans don't have that idea that the quality of dress and quality of and and health are connected. You can be healthy and successful and dress poorly. But at the hard times, it just becomes correlated. So if you're well dressed, you're connected to the source of power and to the energy, and um, and uh, people respect you. So if you still have white, short, and uh, clean clean dress, and you look well groomed, people will, will treat you differently. So. In hard times, it's essential to, to stay clean and look pretty. It's, it, it makes no sense, but it is one of the facts of life. In hard times, looking clean is, is a power. Um, yeah, building a, a, an outhouse in nearby is, that's like second thing you do. You, you cash your money, you get your supplies, and then you start building an outhouse. If there is no water supply, you got to build a a toilet in 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 in, in the backyard. Moving out of the city and uh, farm a small town would be would be nice. Any comments, questions? 
staying positive, staying, it will be temporary. In Russia, we didn't know how long it will, will last. We all lost, but you know, we don't know. Will it last for a week, a month, a year, five years? It lasted for about three and a half years to five years, it depends on the time. In the hardest of times, my, my kids were like really hungry, two years old, one and a half years old, and three and a half years old. Really hungry kids, no food around, parents can't help, no money. And then for little money, and the phone still worked. We called elsewhere, and we found they still have, a, uh, the train still was working. They still have that, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, resort. So in the hardest of times, I think it was December, very cold winter, we said, you know, it can be worse, let's go to resort. And we had that little money, it was the, the, outside of the Moscow, the inflation, did, the prices didn't go up yet. So we went there, it was like very far, far, far part of Russia, north, maybe whole night riding on the train north. And there was food. We, you know, that that part of the country didn't get hunger yet. So for the for a little money, we could buy food, and the the price of the resort also had the the, the meals, and you had as much butter as you could, and as much butter as you can. So kids like ate butter like crazy because they were deprived. Uh, they ate pancakes and butter, and get seconds and thirds and so on. And after maybe. Ten days in that resort, the light went down. Like, we hadn't experienced it in Moscow yet, but in that resort, like you run away, you go elsewhere, you have food, and then the light goes down. And it was in the kitchen, as a, like in the, in the food area, as we were were eating or prepared, starting to eat, and that you know it's dark in the, in the evening. This starts the darkness starts early. And uh, you can see, so they lit up a little uh, napkin and put some vegetable oil on the plate and put the napkin there and made a lamp. Okay. Right. And after a short, and, and the service resumed, they had the food, why would they throw it? So they, they uh, served the food and as that fire continued, it broke the plate, the plate cracked, and the oil, burning oil started floating on the floor, so there was a fire there. So <laughs> they put it down. You have to learn how to put down the fire. Go camping and learn it. They put it down, things resumed, the light went on next morning, and uh, the news came that it will be regular. They just couldn't pay for the supplies of the fuel, so they just have the light off for a certain number of hours per day. And it was all over Russia like that. You kind of, you didn't have complete disaster, but you experienced how it would taste like. And it wasn't much worse than that. Uh, my friend was um, uh, having rabbits in his uh, balcony. Like, you know, if you don't have a garden plot, you would just, get some food, I don't know from where, but some vegetable food for rabbits. I think it was still possible, maybe potatoes. In Russia, potatoes is easiest to grow. So you get potatoes, feed, feed rabbits, and then the family would kill a rabbit and eat it, cook it and eat it. I hate the taste of rabbit. It tastes like rats. But but uh, they live like that. It's just, uh, in Russia, it's not unbelievable. It's close to common thing. I would say that was, uh, right now the same family, um, the economy went down in Belarus, you know, it's, it's pretty pretty down, not very, not terribly down, but pretty down. So my friend immigrated to America, actually he lived with me for a while, and, and until he learned English and uh, the ways of living. And uh, through his friends he found a job for his mother to be a, 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 how do you say, a guard, I guess, a guard, uh, maintain an administrator in the morgue where they keep the dead bodies. So she loves the job. It pays well and uh, nobody, there is, uh, it's quiet. You just sit there and, you know, watch your television, play on the computer, I don't know what she does, but 
but uh, you know, the hardest thing for many people would be to go ask for help, especially from relatives. Um, I urge you, forgive your relatives, go ask for help, help them exchange help. Go around and ask people who need help. If you can move around and you can help others, that would be one of the best things you can do. As you help others, like some people can share with you what they have, and, and that lets you run much longer. Uh, there is tons more supplies when you exchange supplies. And some people fall apart in their crisis, and some few people stay strong in the crisis. It's amazing. I think it goes through past generations, but like my favorite example is Winston Churchill. Well, when the whole England fell down, they all it was desperate. Journalists were coming, and they they didn't believe they would make it. One person is just like one of the best examples in history. One person st said, "No, we'll fight them. Come, come around me. Come join me. We'll fight them. We'll win that war." And they did. Tons of miracles happened, but basically one person takes a stand and said, no, here's the line. I stand here. You can run away, but I will stand. If I, if needed, I will fight alone. Same thing happened in, in Russia, Yeltsin, when he was standing and uh, protecting the democracy when the, 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 the military cope was, was happening in 1991. I think it was 1991. So um, some people, like, our dear Sabrina is that kind of, I, I cherish her strength. If things happen, there are some people you would rely on, that would stand, wouldn't run away, that would hold the ground. I'm not, not that kind, I would run away, yeah. Or maybe I will run around in circles, but <laughs> I wouldn't stay and hold the ground, I wouldn't fight. Um, I wouldn't hold the weapons, I wouldn't even keep the, the mm, I don't see myself keeping the weapons. But I would I would uh, communicate, coordinate. Any comments, questions so far? Dream, how do you feel? All right, everybody ran away. Is uh, am I talking to the only to the recording? Oh, I have seven viewers. Hello, seven viewers. So it's it's good. Any comments, questions? All right, then I will just reiterate and see if any prepare your questions if you if you're ready. Um, is there any questions so far here? Nope. 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 No, no history. Let me see. Do you have any questions, comments? Good. All right. So Reiki. Oh, Jim, how how are you? It looks like we you and I are left alone. Everybody else is left. Actually, we have seven um, viewers. They're telling me that um, all the information that's necessary has been given, pretty much. Uh huh. Um, and that people are, are are taking that and leaving, but um, that's fine. It doesn't have to go on for four hours. It, okay. It just goes on as long as it needs to go. So, so if you have more to say, that's good. But I'm done. They're telling me that uh, no one else is coming, and I have nothing else more to say. Uh, but the information that has come forward today is important, and I and it's important not to overload people as well. So I think there's a lot for people to think about as we are here today, and um, and everything that you said it was very relevant. I understood exactly where it came into relevance and but I think maybe we should stop soon because we don't want to overload everybody okay um, yeah just to wrap it up it's it's an illusion the even the disaster is an illusion 
it is yes. uh, a spiritual event. Uh, spirit is real, and the disaster is an illusion. Uh, we go through a certain transformation, and you create this scenario. Your spirit creates this scenario. So create it the best possible. It doesn't have to go really bad. It can go go smoothly. So imagine your possible transformation, your possible ascension, and collectively we'll, we'll create the best scenario we can. It is even possible we go without uh, complete, like in Russia, it didn't work. It didn't go to, to the complete disaster. It was signs of the complete disaster, but it didn't go complete. The Moscow never died. Moscow always had power. Well, a few hours when it went down here and there, but it went back. The water, they would turn off hot water, but you would still have cold water. Very rarely you wouldn't have cold water, maybe one a day a week, but, but it didn't go much worse. So it is possible, and especially I'm proud of Americans. Americans do things well, and there is that a huge layer of people who are honest and uh, will even work without money to keep the situation under control, keep the utilities going. It might eventually kind of uh, dribble, be unstable, but it. I'm much hopeful that the you know, first waves will be okay. There will be some some way of backup. Some people, some town administration will find the ways to keep it going. Um, so spiritually, imagine it going through again. You will have several years to live through that. It, it doesn't happen tomorrow. We will keep talking about that, and it becomes habitual. You know, first time you think about it, oh, it's a disaster. When you speak about that. In December, you'll get used to that idea. It is just, just another scenario which could happen with certain probability, high probability, but but it's not 100% probable. It does have to happen in the next five years, so you'll have time to prepare. And um, it will just when when you get used to that, you can get used to anything. When you get used to that, it's to that thought. Uh, I don't know. Many of us went through it in 2012. We were thinking that that crisis would happen in 2012. So that time, I prepared really like I only, the only thing that, I don't remember if I had generator, but I knew if there was a sign that generator would be needed, I would run to Walmart and and get it. I would be the one in, first in the line to get it, and I, I priced it out. And I, I you know, but for generator you need fuel, so you need to stock up fuel. So so, practically it's survivable, spiritually build up your spirit, you have years to evolve to an avatar state. And as avatar state, again I say, connected to God and embodying God, embodying your higher self, embodying the spirit, being connected, feeling the guidance, practicing the guidance, practicing the muscle of being guided. It's a muscle, a spiritual muscle. It's a channel, spiritual channel which you pump. You go into meditation, you establish a connection, and then you go out of meditation, but you keep that connection. And you hear, Jim hears it all the time. I hear it often, especially in special times, like in the shower. I hear that. When showers are not working, you <laughs> when showers are not working, you actually will be hearing that much better. When there is silence around, when there is no noise, no television, no common delusion of humans, the voice of God will be loud. That's the main message. When things go down, the voice of God will be loud. You will hear that. Allah na Allah na Allah na
Any comments, Thank blessings? You. Anybody want to give a blessing? I can't hear you. Who was that? Oh. Did you want to give a blessing? That was Emmy. Hey, Emmy, yeah. Do you want to say something? No? Emmy is... No. She's there twice. Right. Jim, go ahead. Okay, I'll say a blessing to say to close everything down here. Thank you. Thank you, O oh divine creator, mother, father, God, for being here with us today, for opening our eyes to one thing or another. Whatever we needed to learn today, you have opened our eyes a little bit wider so that we may know how to prepare ourselves spiritually, physically, mentally, consciously to all the things that are around us. Let us be more observant of one another and kind to one another, loving to one another. Bring the light out in one another in a greater way than ever before. Try to hold that space in love and clarity so that we may not misunderstand, so that we may not uh, bring in negativity. Help us to find that space of positivity to dwell in so that we can be who you want us to be in that moment. Thank you so much for making us all individuals. Thank you so much for giving us our own uh, thoughts and processes and guiding us with those thoughts and processes to create a whole new world when we need to. Much love to you and much love to all that are here. Amen. Amen. Thank you much, Jim, and thank you all for co-creation of this. Thank you, viewers. We can, we can see you there. And thank you all who will watch that. We'll repeat that. Thank you. Uh, that will become one of the regular topics and we'll continue to, to talking about that. We'll also listen to what the Spirit will tell us and uh, we were guided to do this and we'll see what, what will be the next guidance. Very good. Excellent. Right. Thank you, Max. And thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate okay. it. Much love to you all. Much love. Bye all. Bye-bye.